Aloha everyone, my name is Charles and this is the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report for January 12th, 2020. In this report, I will cover the Kilauea volcano status, earthquake activity, and the Halemau Ma'u Crater Lake. I am going to start this update with the status of the Kilauea volcano. During December 2019, monitoring data has not shown any significant changes in volcanic activity. Variable rates of seismicity occurred during the month, but appear to be within expected long-term values. Emission levels of sulfur dioxide are still below detection limits at the Lower East Drift Zone and Pu'o'o, while continuing to be low at the summit as well. In the last 30 days, approximately a dozen DI or deflation inflation events have occurred beneath the Kilauea summit. The data from the DI events looks very comparable to the data collected in the prior month of November. At the beginning of March 2019, the GPS stations and tilt meters located at the summit of Kilauea started recording deformation consistent with slow magma accumulation. The accumulation of magma is in the shallow portion of the summit magma system located approximately one mile or one to two kilometers below ground level. Measurements of the gases continue to show low levels of sulfur dioxide, which tends to indicate no notable shallowing of magma in the system at this time. Though, it does appear that the summit lake water is dissolving some of the sulfur dioxide gas, HVO and USGS are continuing to work on understanding this process. To the east of the Kilauea summit, GPS and tilt meter stations have continued to indicate motions of slowed refilling of the deep east rift zone magmatic reservoir. This area is located between Pu'o'o and Highway 130. Data from the monitoring stations still suggest there is no change in the volcanic activity for the region. The east rift zone is still showing indications of motion, and the south flank of Kilauea continues to creep seaward. The movement of the southern side is still elevated, which began after the May 4, 2018 6.9 magnitude earthquake near Kalapana. HVO and I will continue to monitor these areas for any critical changes. In areas of the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone fissures, there are still elevated ground temperatures and gas releases. However, there is no current eruptive activity. Please note, these gases are comprised mostly of water steam, tiny amounts of hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. This area will continue to exhibit these conditions long term, such as the conditions after the 1955 eruption, which persisted for years to decades afterwards. Taking a look at the earthquakes for the last month, we see pretty much the same patterns of quantity and magnitude across the island. Looking at the summit of Mauna Loa, we see the quakes appear similar to the previous month, both in location and frequency. Moving down to the Pahala area, there is still a significant cluster of earthquakes occurring around that area. I believe the seaward movement of the southern flank of Kilauea is most likely responsible for this activity. Finally, over at the summit of Kilauea and the East Rift Zone, the quake action is pretty consistent with the events from the previous month. Except for a few 3.0 or higher earthquakes, the activity has been mostly the status quo for the last 30 days. We are now going to take a look at the Halemaumau Crater Lake. In this first image, posted by the USGS on December 12, 2019, we see it is a photo comparison. On the left, indicated by a white circle, this massive rock was visible on the eastern end of the lake on November 28th. However, by December 12th, it was completely submerged under the rising water level. On December 18th, we see an HBO geologist utilizing a thermal camera to study this phenomenal new lake. For the first time in history, 
the geologist can use this technology to analyze this category of volcanic characteristics of the Kilauea volcano. The geologists from UHVO were also able to access the down-dropped block that formed during the 2018 collapse events. This location is on the east side of the crater lake and it presents a magnificent unobstructed view of the expanding summit lake. On the 18th, the lake was approximately 650 feet or 189 meters measured in the east-west direction and is close to the length of four Olympic-sized swimming pools. Looking at the image around the edges of the lake, you can see the light blue yellow areas. These areas most likely indicate the location of the inrush of groundwater. The geologist also sees this opportunity to utilize a high precision GPS unit to solicit latitude, longitude, and altitude data about the down-dropped portion of the Kilauea's caldera. HVO conducted an overflight operation of the summit, also on the 18th, to collect both visual and thermal images. The images and other scientific observational data collected is to provide further information on changes at the summit. Rounding out the 18th, here is a time-lapse sequence showing two hours of activity of the Halemau Mau Crater Lake. Water motion is quite apparent along the distinctive orange color boundary at the center of the lake, including along parts of the lake edges. Moving on to December 27th, the USGS released a video showing the 3D model assembled from the aerial photographs taken during the December 18th overflight. Looking at the model, you can see the lake in the deepest part of the crater. In this construct, the lake is approximately 650 feet or 189 meters long and 1,970 feet or 600 meters below the western rim of the caldera. On January 9th, 2020, the USGS reported as of early January, the dimensions of the lake are 280 feet or 84 meters by 620 feet or 190 meters and the current depth is approximately 75 feet or 23 meters deep. However, there is a discrepancy between the numbers reported on December 18th and the 27th as compared to the report on January 9th, 2020. Based on this timeline of the USGS data postings, the numbers would indicate a decrease in the size of the lake. However, that is not the actual case. The lake has continued to increase steadily in both diameter and depth since its first appearance. Finally, if you appreciate content like this, please consider clicking the like button to let me know. And if you would like a notification when new videos are available, you will need to click the subscribe button, then the bell icon, and be sure to select all notifications. For more great content, Visit Doing Hawaii's Facebook page and the new group, Photographic Hawaii. You can also show your support for the channel by picking up a cool Doing Hawaii t-shirt, calendar, poster, phone case, or other fantastic items all available in my online stores. Links to those and other great stuff is down in the description below. That will wrap up this edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. Mahalo for watching and be sure to have an incredible morning, afternoon, or evening.